Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to look in a little bit more detail at what the transfer function looks like for a zero. Now, this is on the Baudet plot. Now, of course, there's different ways of naming that type of plot. My son, one of my sons calls it the Bode plot. I've called it the Bode plot. A lot of people call it the Baudet plot, which is the proper way of pronouncing that, by the way. But anyway, what does it look like? Well, we have what we call the magnitude plot and the phase plot. And if we go back to a transfer function that looks like this, we've seen this equation before in an er earlier video, notice when we reduce it into the standard form, we end up with an s in the numerator, and of course the constant. We looked at the constant in the previous video, but now let's look at an s which represents a zero. Remember that s equals j omega, and so the magnitude comes from omega and the phase angle comes from the j. It turns out for every uh, for every zero, there's a plus 90 degree phase shift. And so when we draw the phase plot, you can see for a zero, we have a plus 90 degree all the way through for every omega. Of course, on the, vert, on the horizontal axis, this represents omega. As far as the magnitude is concerned, notice the magnitude in dB is 20 times the log for the value of omega. Now, when omega is equal to 1, the log of omega is zero, so the magnitude in dB will be zero. So the plot crosses over the zero dB line at the omega being equal to one. And then, of course, there's a 20 dB increase for every decade increase for omega. So when omega goes from one to 10, at that point, we're at 20 dBs. When it goes to 100, we're at 40 dBs. When we go to 1,000, we go to 60 dBs. Notice we can represent these numbers by 10 to the zero, 10 to the one, 10 to the two, 10 to the three. So it's basically one, two, three times 20, which gives you the magnitude of the transfer function as a result of the zero that we find here in the numerator. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each one of these separately, and then we'll show you some more examples of how to put them all together to draw the final total summation plot of all the magnitudes and all the phases caused by each individual portion of the transfer function. And that is how it's done. 